So you've probably heard the phrase that Star Citizen requires a NASA computer in order to get some smooth frames. And while that may be a bit hyperbolic, it is true that Star Citizen is very resource intensive. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist, and in this video, I wanted to help shed some light on Star Citizen's performance on your computer so you get a good understanding of why it runs very well in some situations and very badly in others. The goal of this, of course, is to help you make a more informed decision when you decide to upgrade your PC or buy a whole new one so that you don't make any expensive mistakes when you're just trying to play Star Citizen with decent frames. Now, why am I doing this? Well, I'm not a PC expert, I'm not a software engineer, but there really is isn't going to be anybody in that field on YouTube doing a video on Star Citizen anytime soon. And people are trying to buy PCs right now for this game. Hate it or love it, it's true, and I get that question all the time. So I'm going to take you guys through the Star Citizen telemetry page and explain how it can help you make a PC building decision, and then I'm going to show you a comparison between my old 7820X and my new 10900K. I'll then wrap up with my own interpretation of that data, as well as provide some information about future performance boosts to Star Citizen, and finally, my own thoughts on what you should do if you're upgrading or buying a new PC. So every time you log into Star Citizen as part of the alpha, your system's performance is monitored and sent to CIG so that they can evaluate how everybody's PCs are handling their updates. This way they know if they've made the wrong choice with a certain tweak or the right one and they can refine the performance in Star Citizen with every patch. About a year ago, CIG decided to make this information publicly available to us on a page on their website called Telemetry. This is what it looks like on their website. You can find a link to it in the description below. Now here you're going to get a heat map of everybody's PC performance playing Star Citizen as about an average. And if you click on the C outlying data, you'll get an even more extensive view of some more higher end PCs that are not typical of consumers. Which is useful because you can start seeing how very, very high end GPUs or CPUs don't necessarily yield really good benefits in Star Citizen's engine. You can get a more specific readout of what these heat map boxes represent by clicking on them and they'll tell you what the FPS that that system got as well as the CPU and GPU. On the upper right you also get a CPU and GPU score as well as your settings in the game, the amount of RAM you have, whether or not you have an SSD as well as your loading time, and it'll compare your loading times with previous patches so you can get an idea if things have improved or gotten worse. In this case, 3.9 is running a little bit worse than 3.8. Now if you look closely you'll see a purple dot with lines extending to the right and upward. Anything to the left and below that line is below their minimum hardware recommendation. The green line on the other hand represents their recommended PC hardware. This is where you're going to find some pretty high end PCs, and if you look for the orange dot if you played Star Citizen, that's where you fall. Mine's not fully updated yet since I just upgraded from a 7820X to a 10900K, so that'll update shortly. Now if I wanted to get an even more specific readout of what people are getting with my resolution, I can go and select 3440 by 1440 and it's going to show me all the different people who are using that resolution and what sort of performance they're getting along with their CPU and GPU. And you can see I fall pretty close to one of the higher end systems, but you also have to keep something else in mind with this heat map. These do not take into account your core frequency, overclocking, uh, or anything like that. So if you're overclocking your CPU or GPU, obviously that's going to affect where you fall on this chart. So by now you're probably getting what this is used for. If you're interested in playing Star Citizen and you don't know if your PC can run it, you can actually go and look at this page, select your resolution, your desired settings, and go find your PC in this list by clicking on some of the boxes. Eventually you'll find your GPU and CPU and see what people with similar systems are getting. If it falls below what you desire, then you know that your PC maybe isn't up to the task. It can also be used to find out maybe what you want to upgrade to in the current patch, but you got to keep something else in mind with this, and that's it changes per patch because they're adding things and tweaking things, as I've said earlier in the video, and so your performance may vary. Now in the next part of this video, I'm going to use a comparison between my old 7820X and my new i9-10900K to talk about what Star Citizen is doing to your PC and how it might be affecting performance. 
For this comparison, I swapped out my i7-7820X on the X299 platform on a tough Mark 1 Asus motherboard for an i9-10900K on an Asus Maximus Hero 12 Z490 chipset motherboard. Everything else has remained the same between the two PCs, the exact specifications of which can be found in the upper left hand corner of the screen. But before I get started showing these results, I need to put out this disclaimer because I know some of you are going to comment this in the comment section below, and that's, yes, I know it is impossible to have an exact one-to-one -one comparison because you can't have the exact same scene. Star Citizen is a live environment, so it's impossible to control all the variables. So I did my best to try to replicate the exact same conditions for each scene that I've done. Lastly, I've decided to select a series of scenes from the most taxing environment in Star Citizen to the least taxing environment. So that's from Lorville, Hurston's still pretty bad for frames, up to Space, which is the best for most people with frames, and we should get a good idea of what that's doing to our PC, and an overall good look at what Star Citizen is doing to our PCs. On the left side we have the new i9-10900K, while on the right we have the i7-7820X. Our first scene is the least taxing of the bunch, and that's just inside the EasyHab looking straight on. For each of these seven scenes, I have recorded the minimum and maximum frames experienced for both CPUs, which will be represented as a graph in the upper left hand corner. So you'll see in this scene that both CPUs are performing rather similarly to one another, with the 10900K having a slight edge over the 7820X. The reason why there's such a small disparity between these two is that this particular scene is not really CPU bound, it's more GPU dependent. If you look at the percentage of usage, down below. Pay attention to those frame times though, we're going to come back to those a little later. This next scene though is very different. Notice how the 10900K is now noticeably better than the 7820X. The GPU load on the 10900 is nearly at 100% where it's only at about 80 to 70% from the 7820X. This is because the better single core performance from the 10900K is able to pass the information to the GPU much more easily and much more quickly than the lower core frequency clock of the 7820X. The CPU percentage use is a little bit misleading though here because both of these have different amounts of threads. The 10900 has 20 threads whereas the 7820X only has 16. They're both only using 8 threads for both of these CPUs for this particular scene. Scenes 3 and 4 though are quite similar to scene 1. That's because they're not having to work quite as hard as in scene 2 where there were a lot of objects in the background. Now why are we going back and forth between CPU and GPU bound scenes? Well that's because of the way the tech works in Star Citizen. Object container streaming streams parts of the level in and out live in the background, and so depending on where you're looking in the scene and where you are, you may have more or less objects actually present in the game space. And there's nowhere better in the verse to demonstrate tons of objects in a scene than to fly down to one of the cities. Lorville has been notorious for bad performance, that along with Artcorp and now we've got Microtech. You'll notice the biggest difference is happening here. Well, the first scene's difference was around 3 to 4% in performance, now we're getting into the 36 to 40% difference in performance between the 7820X and the 10900K. But in none of these cases are we getting to a huge amount of CPU use. And that's because not all of the processes in Star Citizen are multi-threaded. Yes, Star Citizen can use all of your cores, but for most things in the background, it's only using a few. So what does this tell us about Star Citizen and its performance? Well, what it says to us is that Star Citizen doesn't fully utilize your CPU's multiple threads. Instead, it uses some of them for some processes and only a few for others, meaning that while having more threads can certainly help with performance, single clock frequency is vitally important to being able to hand off that information to allow your GPU to work better. Now, the current performance is nowhere near what CIG has stated that they want. They want everybody to get good frames and they are actively working on adding more performance tweaks into Star Citizen by utilizing more threads on multi-core processors. They're also working on getting a lot of stuff off of the CPU onto the GPU by adding in DirectX 12 and Vulkan, which is going to do stuff like give them the ability to have more GPU particle effects, like 
clouds <laughs> and nebula, which they've shown us a bit of in some videos in the past. But before we move on to my thoughts on what you should do for your own computer, I want to end this segment by talking about the frame time being lower on the 10900K. It's actually lower in every single scene by at least one millisecond, which means that it's not hanging for as long as the 7820X. This translates into less hitching, less stuttering, and an overall smoother experience even if the frames are identical on both CPUs. So when looking at your own benchmarks and the benchmarks of friends, make sure you ask them about the frame time that they're getting, not just the total frames they're getting per second. So what should you do then if you're buying a new PC or if you're upgrading? Well, what I would tell you is not to spend too much money on the CPU. Having the highest end CPU from either AMD or Intel is not necessarily going to help you because as you get more threads, you get lower core frequency clocks, which as I've shown in this video are beneficial to performance as not all things in Star Citizen will be multi-threaded, even as they performance optimize this going into the future. As I've shown on telemetry at this very moment in time, in 2020, the 3900X and the 10900K-9900K are pretty much neck and neck for performance, so that'll be the highest I would suggest you go. Anything beyond that, unless you're overclocking, is going to be inferior to those CPUs because of their stock core frequency clocks. And with the money you'll save by not spending too much on your CPU, you can instead focus on getting at least 16 to 32 gigs of RAM for optimal performance, an SSD install drive like the ones from Samsung, either a 950 or 970 at this time seem to be really, really good, and then finally, getting a decent GPU, say a, a 2060, 2070, 2080s, something like that, and eventually the 30 series will be coming out probably at the end of this year or at the beginning of next year. The CPU for Star Citizen is always going to be super, super important though, so do not cheap out if you're looking to play Star Citizen on your CPU in favor of getting a higher end GPU. What you'll end up doing is bottlenecking your computer because Star Citizen is so incredibly CPU hungry. And finally, if you're not sure if the build you've chosen to buy is going to be able to run Star Citizen at the 30 or 60 frames you want, then check telemetry like I showed you in this video at your desired settings and desired resolution to get a good idea of a ballpark of where your performance is going to sit in the correct patch. So I hope this has helped you understand what Star Citizen is doing to your PC and has helped you make a more informed decision when building a new computer to play Star Citizen. I hope I helped you save some money by not buying an overpowered CPU. If you guys want to ask me questions live, I am live on Twitch every single week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays where I play with the community. I'm also over on my Discord where you can always come and ask me questions there. Thank you guys so much for sitting through this very long and maybe somewhat boring but necessary video on Star Citizen's performance. I've been Morphologist, I hope to see you guys next time. <laughs>